Hello, what I'd like to do in this video is to talk a little bit about the Attic Horizon camera and in particular concentrate on the gain function. That's quite a, uh, it's a point of difference between the Horizon and CMOS camera and our normal CCD cameras. Uh, in order to get the best out of the Attic Horizon we really need to understand a little bit about how it works and how to, how to optimise the gain setting for the sorts of imaging we're doing. It's a slightly abstract concept, so what I've done is I've created a little piece of software here uh, and it'll show graphically some of the ideas that we're going to talk about. So if I introduce this to you... Okay, on the left hand side of this diagram we have a representation of a pixel. So our attic horizon has about 16 million of these pixels spread on the surface of its sensor. And the job of the pixel itself is to uh, absorb photons and convert them into electrons and then store those electrons. Uh, the quantum efficiency of the horizon is around 50%. So it takes a couple of photons to generate an electron in the pixel. So in this case we can see as we simulate adding more and more photons to the pixel we generate and store more and more electrons. So of 5,000 electrons it would take about 10,000 photons to generate that charge. And we keep going all the way up to the top here, where the maximum number of electrons we can store in a pixel is 20,000. So that's a full well depth of 20,000 electrons. As we're seeing, it'll take about 40,000 photons to generate that charge. So the next stage in the signal processing chain for the Attic Horizon is an amplifier. It's the job of the amplifier to take the electrons stored within a pixel and convert them into a, a voltage. So this is taking charge and converting it to the voltage. So that's charge to voltage domain. That's an important concept within all image sensors, uh, regardless of being CMOS or CCD. And the voltage is then something that can be used for the ADC. The analog to digital converter within the camera is actually a 12-bit ADC. Uh, that means it can take a voltage and convert it to a 12-bit number, which is a number between 0 and 4096. Uh, so as we see, we put different pixel values uh, into the amplifier. It gives a proportional voltage output, and that voltage is taken and produces a numeric output from the ADC unit. So we start off at no electrons corresponding to no volts from the amplifier, an output of zero ADU units. We're up to 20,000 electrons, giving a voltage of one to the ADC, and an output of slightly over 4,000 ADU units. So one of the differences between the Horizon camera and the rest of the cameras within the attic range, particularly the CCD cameras, uh, is that the Horizon itself has a 12-bit analog digital converter, whereas the rest of the cameras tend to have a 16-bit converter. So most of the cameras are representing a saturated full well pixel at 65,000 uh, units. So what we do with the Attic Horizon output is we scale it to be a 16-bit output, just so it behaves and looks more similar to other uh, cameras that are 16-bit cameras. So it's basically just a multiplication of 6 times 16. So full well goes from being 4,000 electrons. 4,000 counts at the analog to digital converter. And by the time we actually pass that along to the computer, we see that as a 65,000 uh, pixel count. And it, it just behaves in a linear way. So if we have the half or zero, zero pixel or zero electron, we have a final output of zero ADUs. And we wind this up to the halfway point, 10,000 electrons. That gives an output of 2,000 counts from the ADC and we then scale that to be the half full scale of a normal 16-bit image that's about 32,000 ADU counts. Right then. now where this starts to get interesting is that the amplifier itself has controllable gain. So we're not restricted to just using this gain of one that we've been talking about up to this point but we can increase the gain. So if we just take an example here if we have a pixel value of 5,000 electrons, 
Uh, normally we'd see this 0.25 volts going into the ADC and an output of around 1000 from the ADC itself. What we can do is we can increase the gain. So we increase the gain to 2. Uh, then with our 5000 electrons will then be generating half a volt into the ADC. That's twice, twice the amount. And the output uh, then becomes 2000. Again, twice as much output. So this is a way of focusing in on the smaller signals, it amplifies the smaller signals. What we find is, as we increase the number of electrons within the pixel, obviously we get an increasing pixel value, but there comes a point in which the image train itself actually saturates. So a gain of two, it saturates around half full well depth. So around 10,000 electrons gives the full 65,000 output at the end of the chain. And it doesn't really matter then, however much we increase the number of electrons within that pixel. Basically we're stuck, we can't uh, report a value of greater than 65,000. Uh, one other thing to mention related to gain, uh, we have this slightly special case where there is a gain of 5. So a gain of 5, we get this interesting situation where the number of electrons is roughly equal to the 12-bit ADC output. So here we have a thousand electrons, we have slightly over a thousand on the ADC output. Uh, so basically the conversion here is, is basically one or unity. And this gets called the unity uh, gain factor. There's nothing particularly special in terms of any features or performance of the camera around this gain of five, or what we call this unity gain situation. Uh, it's just a situation where we have a thousand electrons equaling a thousand AD units at the output of the ADC, uh, even though we end up reporting that then as 16,000 uh, ADU counts at the computer. Okay, so the reason for wanting to uh, alter the gain really comes down to influencing read noise. So just to recap quickly on read noise, it's the noise associated or the uncertainty of associated with measuring nothing. So if we have no electrons in our pixel, we'd expect a value of zero uh, to be recorded. However, we don't see that sometimes. We might see five, we might see 10. The, the distribution is normally what's called normal distribution. And we refer to the width of that normal distribution as a standard deviation. Uh, in the case of the attic horizon, a gain of one, we have a standard uh, deviation of around 11 ADU units. And that corresponds, when we look at the conversion factor, of around 3.6 electrons. Uh, the way we get that 3.6 electrons is that we have a full well depth, equivalent of about 60,000. Uh, that corresponds to 20,000 electrons within the pixel, about threefold. So in order to go from one to the other, you divide the ADU units by about three. If you do it accurately, the read noise of the horizon at a gain of one is about 3.6 electrons. Uh, so let's look in detail at what happens when we change this gain. If we look at this situation where we have two and a half thousand electrons, uh, corresponding to an output here, an output pixel value of about 8,000 ADU units. If we were to increase the amplifier gain by two, factor of two, uh, as we can see, uh, we then have a pixel value that's increased twofold, so it's now 16,000. So our signal has increased by two times. Uh, we'd expect what would happen there is that the noise, the ADU, uh, standard deviation of the read noise, would also increase two times because we've uh, increased the gain two times. However, the interesting thing that happens is that the gain or oh, the read noise actually increases a little less than two times. Uh, so in this case, we now have a read noise around 19 ADU, which corresponds to a read noise around three electrons. Uh, the reason for this is that we are now using the analog to digital converter to more effectively measure these smaller signals. And it can do this then more precisely. Uh, as we increase the gain, we see we're getting uh, smaller and smaller values for read noise. However, we do have to be careful that the amount of signal that we can actually measure 
is going down. So we're really concentrating on the smaller end of the pixel full well. Uh, we can increase the gain factor all the way up to a gain of uh, around 30 is useful. And that gives us a read noise right down around one electron, which is far better than any CCD can do. Okay, so the question might be, why don't we just use high gain all the time? Because it will give us the best signal to noise ratios. Well, that really boils down to the fact that at high gains, we have these very, slow, very small uh, usable full well depths. So a full uh, gain of 30, the full well depth is only 600 or so electrons. And it basically is, is scales with, uh, uh, with gain. So a gain of 1, we have 20,000 full well depth. Gain of 2, the full well depth goes down to just 10,000 electrons. And again, we say 3 is 6,000 electrons. And as we increase the gain to decrease the read noise, we get to the point where the full well becomes very, very small. And that's a challenge if we're going to measure both detail in fainter objects and brighter objects in the same image. Uh, where it works well, high gains, is in things like narrowband imaging, where we're recording detail in the fainter parts of the nebula, but we're not so worried about burning out the brighter stars because you know, for false colour imaging, these haven't got real colours anyway. Uh, it also works well for things like lucky imaging, for spectroscopy. These very high gains can be more problematic when we come to looking at uh, normal RGB imaging with green blue. Uh, if we want to capture true colours of stars, which are relatively bright objects, at the same time as capturing the fainter parts of the nebula, really we'd be better off using some of the lower gain settings. So we have a bigger full well depth, so we can allow some of the brightest stars to have 20,000 electrons uh, in a pixel and the fainter parts of the nebula will have maybe only a few tens or hundreds of electrons in that corresponding pixel. But the pixel itself, because we're using low gain, the whole pixel can be digitised and we capture all that information. If we were to increase the gain for an RGB image up to 30, we might find ourselves collecting some great image on the, uh, the nebula itself, but we'd lose the star colours because they'd all the stars would end up being saturated. So that's gain as we use it in the attic horizon. The attic horizon itself is a very versatile camera. We can use it at uh, high gain settings, giving low read noise and very high signal to noise ratios. But these come at the expense of very small full well depths and small dynamic range. Or we can get the camera to behave much more like a traditional CCD camera. So if we use a gain of one, we have a read noise that is, corresponds to some of the best Sony CCDs and a full well depth that also corresponds to the Sony CCDs themselves. So in some ways we can make the camera behave much more like a traditional CCD camera or we can take the advantage of these low read noise by turning the gain up. I know personally I've had an awful lot of enjoyment from using the Attic Horizon. It's something that's different, it's good to try different techniques with and different processing. Uh, I know it's covered an awful lot of ground in this, uh, in this video. I hope some of it's going to make sense and hope you get a chance to try the Attic Horizon. Thank you for watching.